I mean, not the same. And you have a blue screen of that, so that's good. Actually, they've been taking all sessions were like just downstairs. It is stopping every turn. Good morning. Welcome to those toughing it out to the near end here. My name is Ken Hirsch. I'm at the University of Cincinnati. I have assembled a panel joining us today. Hiding behind the cabinet getting me an Ethernet cable is Tom Ryan, right here at Rutgers. This is Sally. Urban of Wake Forest University, next to her Tom Bruce of LII and Cornell University, next to him Phil Bowl of Pepperdine, and next to him John Haywood of the Washington College of Law at American University, and in the audience are Elmer Masters of Cali and John Mayer of Cali. Refuse to sit up front for some reason. As they say at the beginning of each yes. week's Meet the Press, this is a spontaneous, unrehearsed, but in our case, a panel instead of a press conference. And all I told the panelists to do was to be prepared to talk amongst ourselves and you about anything that they would like to talk about, observations in both <coughs> of both the conferences itself and <laughs> or changes in law school technology or technology as it affects law school since the first conference 19 years ago. Worked perfect for DOS. So, so the process, right? they what? Were. They what? And uh, we're going to talk until about 11.20, and then we're going to have... Wait, wait, wait. No. no. I was supposed to prepare to talk. <laughs> you never need yes. to prepare to talk. You're on the panel. Rant. Go. What? <laughs> what? Why would you be any better prepared? <laughs> <laughs> We're around 11.20. I'm going to fire up what I call all apologies to both the late J. Ward and the Internet Archive, the Cali Wayback Machine. Oh. Ooh. And right. show you, depending upon who you are, either some nostalgic live software or some software you have never seen run live before. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, right. John. I would like to acknowledge that we have a, a, Cali, uh, a Cali alumni here in uh, Steve Burke who has driven further than anything just for this session. Right. There's something profoundly wrong. Yeah, I was the beer hike. <laughs> <laughs> no, you came for the beer hike, John. So if okay. anyone wants to volunteer something, do. Otherwise, I have a question or two I can see the discussion with. But. Anyway, well, John talked about starting the conference uh, at, the, at the beginning of his introduction to the plenary the other day, so we don't need to go too deep into that. So let me ask Tom Bruce a little bit. Tell me what in your mind fomented the, the creation of Cello? How did that come about? Uh, Cello came about because when we looked around at early browser development, say 90 or 95, we didn't see anybody taking Windows seriously, which was weird, and well, well nobody takes Windows seriously now. <laughs> 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 Windows 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 Nobody was giving it the attention it seemed to deserve <laughs> given the market share that it had, and that was the sort of thing that was possible <laughs> only because all web development was really taking place in that sort of National Science Foundation funded, high energy physics oriented corner of the world was doing units of Macintosh stuff. And on top of that, nobody was really thinking about, believe it or not, dial up or indeed anything else other than fully wired Ethernet of the sort that you find in universities. And so the thought was, well, you know, there's nobody doing software uh, that lawyer, lawyers do. Because this was just missing the legal market altogether. We thought it would be fun to try. That group would be mistaken, but we did it. <laughs> uh, and frankly, the, 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 my main purpose was to shame somebody else and to do a better one, which we're told to do. And I would note that um, John, I don't know if I pronounce his name really, Borak, not, not the composer, but the columnist of PC Magazine, had an article a few issues ago when he was talking for some reason about. Uh, browsers and, and mistakenly said that Mosaic was the first Windows browser. And before I could even fire up <coughs> my comment, someone else had already corrected him, but he said that no, in fact, Cello was, and then gave and then embedded the link to the 
Wikipedia article on cello. Where that bold <laughs> stage that article. came out. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> cello still has fans. It does. It does. Most, but I have to oh, tell you, it doesn't right. render HTML5 most real are, well. <laughs> most, most of them aren't a federal indictment. <laughs> 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 we can get to some more HTML5, Tom. <laughs> you know, it, it, in all seriousness, that, that was partly what, what, what drove us out of it, was the fact that features were proliferating so fast that the idea of doing something like that with a one or two person development team was just impossible. Even by say 1994, 1995, uh, we did have it, it had a little bit of a longer life than anyone knew about because there were there were portions of it that got reused as the over the wire data fetcher in some Folio Corporation products and some other licenses. <laughs> and one of its odder survivals <laughs> that John was referring to. This is this is the why I should have sued Microsoft for many nickels story. Uh, sometime while we were working on the second version, the one that was never widely released, uh, we were in alpha test. I had I had uh, licensed an image rendering library uh, from somebody or other. It was a commercial one to use in it, and it had in it this really stupid feature uh, by which you could cause a string of text to rotate in the Windows title bar was built into the image package because I was sort of upset over the stupidity of stuff like the blink tag at the point where we decided that we were going to break HTML completely by putting a graphical rendering feature. I introduced as a joke for the alpha testers something called the marquee tag that would actually cause whatever you saw in between the marquee tags to rotate in the Windows title bar because this image library would do it and it seems stupid and everyone got a good laugh out of it. Sure. About two weeks after that happened, I got a call from a guy at Microsoft saying, we're thinking about doing something with a browser. They had not at that point. And we're looking at you, and we're looking at, uh, oh, and whoever internet in the box was, Spyglass. Spyglass. That, that Spyglass company. Right. We're, we're, looking at the, we're looking at the Mosaic guys to use as our code base, because we need to get into this quickly. Uh, if we sign off on a bunch of NDAs, will you send us your source code? And sure, everybody signed a lot of agreements. There's faxing back and forth. <coughs> About a month later, they came back and said, we want nothing to do with your source code. Uh, I simply point out to you that the marquee tag is still supported in IE8. <laughs> 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 it's got to be worth at least five million. <laughs> Tell us to the best you can remember about, now in the early days of, uh, well not only the early days, but certainly in the early days of, of the Cali conference, um, there, were, there were fun outings. Some of the fun outings were events, which I'll ask Phil about in a moment. Some were, some were specialized, special theme restaurant visits. Who did we out? <laughs> Phil, tell us about Battletech. Battletech. All right. Were there two Battletech? There were. 90, yeah. 93 and 94. I'm sorry, 90, 92 no. and 93 Battletech. I went to the 93 Battletech, and I don't think I have lived very long in that uh, environment, but I do remember my, my, <coughs> my sign name, my uh, call sign, which was Nomax. <laughs> and I think I was targeted because of that. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Battletech, this particular location was on uh, Navy Pier in their amusement area. Chicago. And Battletech was a virtual war machine environment where you would sit inside this uh, basically large video game and the four people around you would be in their own machines, you would pick your own machine, and basically it was like being in an ACK ACK or something like an ACK ACK from Star Wars and shooting each other till you ran out, you either got shot or ran out of ammunition or your two or three dollars per play ran out. <laughs> You remember the fun night at Tommy G's, or actually what happened after the fun night at Tommy G's? When, the, when we were left behind. We were left behind, <laughs> along with Tom was very gracious to stay with us to the left. The bus forgot to make one more run. Yeah. <laughs> we got stuck at Tommy G's many miles away. South side of Chicago. Yes. Underneath the railroad tracks. <laughs> <laughs> so about yeah, 11 o'clock, we called some cabs. So Tommy yeah. has its own speakeasy. Yeah, That's great. right. You know, John, actually, this reminds me, I've been meaning to ask you for 15 years. 
How did you ever get so stupid as to make yourself the main target of the paintball? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to think of myself as a target. <laughs> Very black light glowing camo <laughs> He thinks of himself as a training facilitator. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At one point it was, you know, screw the flag. Let's get you on that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You were by the Volkswagen wreck in the middle. <laughs> Just not good. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's actually like a, a, a scary story there. Um, Oh, what's her name? Okay, she was Tif scary. Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany Kramer? Yes. This 80 pound blonde from U UW was there, and she took a paintball hit right above the goggles. Ooh, and, wow. And, and, it, and it ended up in this giant bruise. <laughs> I thought for sure it was Lawsuit City. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to look at the, uh, the hotel staff at the Executive Plaza. <laughs> we, all came, we all came back. Yeah. Just dripping paint. <laughs> no, 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 no. Please go to your bathrooms, whatever. <laughs> John came in the next morning. He said, Tom, I didn't see you in paintball. I said, They were all shooting at me. I said, John, <laughs> what do you think you didn't see? <laughs> <laughs> I still think it was one of the best conference excursions ever. Activities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll do it again next year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's certainly like that. Was that pirate themed restaurant? We went to a themed restaurant. The Kyrie, no, it was Chicago. That was right. It was Chicago uh, land gangster. That's Tommy G's. That was that Tommy, Tommy G's. G's. That was gone. We did Tony and Tina's wedding one year. We did Tony and Tina's wedding. We did, wedding. We did the Irish wake. We did the Irish wake. And, and the same year we did Tony and, and, and Tina's, we did Sheer Madness. And Sheer Madness. And Blue Man Group. The That's first good. year it was out. And I was over, and when we bought the tickets, we bought the tickets six months in advance because, you know, we had to do that. And I, and I said, well, is this show going to be running, you know, six months from now? And they're like, well, we're not sure. <laughs> you know, it's just 15 years later, it's in Vegas. In 93, we went to Second City, and the, or no, that, that was 93. No, that was later. That was okay, later. okay. Later. we went to the improv, or whatever the Chicago equivalent of the improv is. Mm -hmm. And the wait staff had what appeared to be PDAs. And that was like right around the time that Newton had come out. And yes, I remember Ken accosting the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Is that her BBA, no doubt. Do <laughs> you think we could get a textbook on that? <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom, Ryan, the <coughs> this group certainly. What was, was yours 95 or 94, your first conference? Uh, 94. And how old were you? 95. It was 95. It was 95. It was 95. Wait, wait, wait. Did you hold a valid driver's license at the time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, uh, I was 20. We went to uh, that crab place. I was like, uh, so here, have a beer. And I'm like, Sorry. I don't like crab, and I'm not 21. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember oh, sitting God. there at the table, and everyone's like, going crazy, eating crabs. And I'm sitting there, I'll drink, and I'm just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a, a Western barbecue theme restaurant that also serves seafood, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had so that's got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at that conference, Tom went toe to toe with Joe Rosenfeld. I don't remember how many of you remember him. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tom was representing the wonders of was Linux. With, no, see, that's where you're wrong. Oh, was it Unix itself? No. Oh, what were you Joe doing? was doing that. Oh, you were doing, he was doing that. I got stuck with NT. Oh, he got stuck with and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I have to fight for why NT is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's great! And I was pushing that way. Being, being, being too young to recognize a hazing ritual. <laughs> <laughs> he, he carried himself off very well, but then when we got to, back to the bar at the Holiday Inn Mart that night, all he could have was the soft stuff. Yes. Now, the Holiday Inn... I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, I want to share, all. I got an email, and I hope the person who emailed me is not in this room right now, because it's kind of embarrassing. This person wrote to me and said, oh, I remember you from my first Cali session in 1994. Check, I wasn't there. You did such a great job, but you came in and, and it seemed like you were you were completely hungover and <laughs> drunk. This is supposed to be flattering. I'm like, check, you don't know me. It's like, and you had your whole presentation written on cocktail napkins. I'm thinking, who cracked that mic with me? That sounds like Haywood. That person's 
here. You, you know, know what? what? You know why you got that email? Because you were the one heckling. <laughs> no, no, no. Haywood stood up and said, "Hi, my name is Tom Ryan." We <laughs> 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 proceeded to begin the presentation. <laughs> Ninety-four, ninety-five. Phil Ball and I roomed together at the, at the Holiday Inn Mart, and it, it's, they have the most incompetent desk staff. And oh, okay. It's truly amazing. Was the year your suit was lost? Well, I said, uh, one of those. I think ninety-seven <laughs> was the year my suit was lost up by the airborne by the airborne uh, van folks. Or the Why were you shipping a suit? <laughs> <laughs> right, not airborne. The airport express. <coughs> the people who pick up the fan. <laughs> in Home Alone, the same group that serves O'Hare. They lost my suit. My suit disappeared between my boarding the van and my getting off the van at the hotel. My brand new suit. Wait, okay, that sounds like a Mission Impossible <laughs> scene. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the desk staff at that hotel just could not, for the life of them, get billing right, sharing right, anything right. It was, and you think, you know, we'd show up a year later, they took a year to figure it out. No, no way. How about the year after that? I don't, I don't think we were at the Mart after that. You were at the Mart two years? You were at the Mart long time. Maybe three or four years. But they never got it right. They never got it right. At least for me, they did one year, but Phil, one year we weren't rooming and he still had problems with them. I think it was just him. It might have been. It might have been. What about technology itself in law schools? I mean, you know, we can point to a lot of things that have changed. Certainly the web is one of the biggest changes. But what other things have made brought significant difference to the way we do our business? I, I remember changing the C prompt. To a serious disc error has occurred. Reboot. <laughs> <laughs> Was that for a faculty member? I put it on all the uh, lab PCs. <laughs> <laughs> How many people just kept sitting there rebooting it? Well, go into the menu after they reboot. Oh, okay. So only once. I remember being the only Mac user in the group. Everybody thought I was nuts. Well, you were, but <laughs> you were merely finally everybody saw the line. You were merely twenty years out of your time. I remember starting in nineteen ninety one, thinking this word perfect program is a piece of trash and it should die. I thought that in nineteen ninety two, nineteen ninety three. By nineteen ninety seven, I thought, well, maybe they'll get rid of it. Um, it's it's still around. And it's still a piece of trash. <laughs> <laughs> I like WordPress. See, I disagree. Reveal, reveal codes. Reveal codes. Yeah. I live and die by reveal codes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but so we were talking about Cello before. Tom demonstrated, I believe it was Cello. Certainly, it was the it was the first public demonstration on the web I'd ever seen at the '93 meeting. And until then, I had been thinking, yeah, Windows. Who needs it? What's it do that I can't do in DOS? And that was the thing that changed my mind. Yeah. What was what was frightening about that? Bomb had hit Chicago Kent in my answer world Cali Mountain. Every single bit of internet expertise in the legal community in the United States would have been wiped out on the spot. Yeah. yeah. There's like six people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back then Al Gore was nearly talking about the information superhighway. I thought he had a shovel. Well, there was a there was a very brief sort of a illusory mention of the Cali conference in uh, Tim Berners-Lee's uh, bio. Yeah. He, he mentioned uh, yeah. meeting Tom Bruce at some conference in Chicago and then driving down to uh, Champaign to meet with Andreessen. Uh, yeah, and that I'm like, oh, come on, mention us! <laughs> yeah, I hate to tell you, John, it was actually an ABA tech show. Oh! <laughs> 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 yes, I would have remembered seeing Tim Berners-Lee. No, uh, no, Tim and I met at ABA tech show been out at Fermilab that day, and I've been doing something with Bernie Allison and Tech Show. We met at the train station, came over to Chicago, and I think I borrowed a room from you, too. Yeah, that's right. He didn't introduce me, though. Double form. Well, I think we got there like 7 o'clock or something. So, you know, yeah, it wasn't there then. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, so we did that, and then the next day we, we, we drove down to Champagne Urbana, and I met in Greece for the first time. And we spent most of that meeting cashing out what later became the CPI standard. So that was the, that was the purpose. Of how do we get how do we get things to talk to serve? Was that your fault? Yeah. I think, yeah. So. <laughs> that and the marquee thing. Might have played with the fire. Now you'll notice that the, at the front of the room we only have one woman among us. And it was it wasn't that there weren't women 
at the uh, early conferences. It's although, just that they didn't last long. They did. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> uh, but but and, 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 and sort of parallel to that, in fact, I, I scoured the list of this year's attendees and recognized and had it next to me, thanks to John Hopkins, who was at the first meeting, which I was not, but I was, and I had my, I had that attendee list and my attendee list, list for the two years after that, and looked for women who were already planning on coming here, and I asked Cindy Johnson to come, but she had, uh, her father had medical problems, so she had to bow out. So Sally was ready to fill in her slot. So Sally, tell us something you remember, either, uh, either address either question, early conferences or differences in tech between now and then. You see, early conferences, you guys, I don't know where you and all that, the women, I guess, weren't invited, but it would be better because <laughs> my whole thing about going to Chicago was that I got to shop all up and down Michigan Avenue. <laughs> so that's when I really got to go to Chicago. You know, Chicago on the law school's dollar, that was a really good way to go. So that was that. But, but it, it was interesting when you were know, you know, so, you know, about ask me about, about doing this because when I start, I'm getting ready August 1st to start my 27th year of and when I started, Ken Zick was the dean, and he was very proud of the fact that Wake had been one of the ten original schools to, he always said, we were one of the ten founding members of Cali, and I don't think 27 years later I ever exactly knew what that meant, that he was a big Cali supporter. And so he started shipping me off to the Cali conferences right away, and the person, another woman, Jean Cox, who was the mm -hmm. head of the computer uh, services at that point. Um, Ken's whole thing when I graduated from law school was I want you to come because you have a technology degree and you have a library degree and you have now the JD and I want you to integrate technology into the legal education process. And that was, there, there was nobody else really like me at that point. And now you look around 20 years later and of course you know, here, here are all these, these, these jobs and you know, this and, and it, wasn't, you know, it wasn't like that. There were you guys, there was the shop that Ellen Miller was running at Harvard and John DeVoy and Lance Van Dyke's Joan Galley at Stanford. Joan Galley yeah. at Stanford. Yeah. There was Chicago Ken people. Mm -hmm. You guys had to, most of you were doing video yeah, that's right. That's how I think I first met you. Right? Yeah, we did that in our ID videos. But it was odd because there were all these little scattered pockets of people. And not very many of us, and all of us, I think, feeling somewhat politically exposed. Uh, yeah. we, uh, that's changed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it hasn't changed in a lot of, I was telling Tom, I, I wrote home on Thursday after his plenary the line about tied to the chair and commanded to dance, and it felt for a couple minutes there like he was just talking to me awake, but of course he wasn't. He was talking to all of us, every, every library in that room, uh, every outfit in that room. And it was interesting because my director, now that's her, her favorite line in the, in the last <laughs> two days, and I'm not quite sure what she's going to do with that. I'll shut her in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not there right now, but it's, it, it's <laughs> so, sort of strange how much it hasn't changed because we were fighting for money. Fighting, yeah. We were fighting for people that were fighting for all of that. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I mean, I actually had a wake story in mind to tell and, and, and did not. I got called down there on a some management so many years ago. Uh, and I, we got to take you to the best restaurant? To remember, to, 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 to uh, I, I don't know, with, with no disrespect intended to anyone, the whole thing had, had been a real blood uh -huh. by, by the time. I found myself sitting in front of this faculty technology committee that was uh, run by a guy who was chaired by a guy. I don't remember his name. What I remember about him was that I very clearly had the impression that he was running for some office that existed only in his mind. <laughs> that was like president of the faculty <coughs> student council. You know, clearly I was dealing with a former student council president here. Part of his platform was to get these technology people whipped into shape. The way he was going to do it was give them all beavers. <laughs> give them all beavers. And I thought, you know, this is just the perfect example of the fact that you share a resource problem. And I looked at these guys and I said, just, <coughs> I have only one question about this. I mean, you want these things because they're going to get your faster service rate. 
yet. Do you want to be the person whose problem is being worked on when the beaver goes off? <laughs> and they're like, oh, <laughs> there are other people in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> they can set off the beavers too. <laughs> well, the beavers didn't last long. She never oh, had to wear one. They put a beaver on me for about three or four months, and I was always leaving. I was going to say, mine would have been on the bumper of some car. Duck jeans. Well, those batteries died. <laughs> Especially when dropped in the water. <laughs> and they get locked in a desk drawer and the key down the left. I actually had that when I got to Emory. There was a beeper up Major in a drawer that was locked. No drawers. It was locked. It was locked. This thing would go off in there. You have missed seventy-five thousand phone calls. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to get a picture of your M up. Yeah. <laughs> it only took this long. He's been quite successful. Dan is the only person who has, I don't know, nine former bosses in this. Yeah, I was just looking at this. I see if Ben, is ben, Ben's not here, is he? No. no, I think he went through like a real session. Ben, <laughs> Eleanor, what were things like at Cornell before you joined Cal? You ran a Cornell shop, right? I did. God, that's right, you did. Yeah, for a brief time. Well, probably the, uh, there, there, there were two things about Cornell. There were three, but I want to stay. will mention her. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the, the the first one was was that when I when I showed up, um, I was ushered into an office that that was the, this really nice sort of long narrow office up in one of the towers, and it would have been great except for the fact that my predecessor had taken apart a couple of cubicles and lined the inside walls and the, covered the windows with the cube walls. It was a box in a box. <laughs> um, and I sat in there for a while, and, and there was... Um, and then he went to Singing. Singing. <laughs> <laughs> so was I was there for a while, and I looked around, and people literally had no idea who I was for probably a good, a good six weeks. We <laughs> finished the best part of this time. <laughs> 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 and, but, but, that, but that all came crashing to an end one, one afternoon when I was uh, walking down the hall with my network administrator, Chris. You know, yeah. was still there, correct? Yeah. yeah, they're all still there. But um, <laughs> except for me, which says something. But, he, um, but we're walking down the hall, and, and, and he brought me, and it comes a faculty member, and we say hello, and the faculty member starts talking to Chris. And he's complaining about this new IT director guy. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I don't like the way he's running things. I don't like his network. And then, um, and then Chris, and then Chris goes, "Oh, have you met Elmer, the, the IT director?" <laughs> oh, that's you. And he turns and walks away. And then that was it. And then, um, and then, and then a few months later, um, I, I got. Uh, called on the carpet because a faculty member had come in at 7 o'clock in the morning and there was no, the toner was out in the shared printer that the faculty used. And so his reaction was to start yelling and to go and hang out yelling in front of the dean's office until the dean showed up at about 8.30 and then yell at the dean about why I wasn't there, why I wasn't there at 7 o'clock in the morning to change the toner cartridge and demand that I be fired immediately. And then it was kind of downhill after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, that, you know, it was, it was, uh, I was there for what, two and a half years, I guess, before I went to, before I went to him, so. <sighs> it was a long hill. It was a long hill. Well, it was, it, you know, it was, it was, it was long, and it was, um, and it was long, and it was dysfunctional. But I did, I mean, I did, I mean, I grew the size of the staff to what it needed to be, and it's still at that, as a matter of fact, most of those people are still there, including several that I hired and a couple that I kept from getting fired um, at the time. So, um, yes, that was that was good. Um, but uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a stressful. 
And speaking about the present conference for a moment, I want to thank both, uh, well, half thank and half blame <laughs> John and Tom for the quality of the food at this one, which I think is probably the best I can remember. But my waistline wants to complain about it. It's Levon's fault. That's right. And everything is And that was our campus dining. Which I would like to tell you that uh, it's horrible. you turn Everyone's around and ask my staff, it's horrible. <laughs> Generally, you're, you're just spoiled. horrible. Um, you need that? Services. Uh, but we're really happy that they were. Well, excited. clearly they saved their best for the visitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Elmer and I have something in common uh, in that we both ran group wise, and there weren't a whole lot of people at law schools who were running it. There were a few yeah. others, but we were some of the observers. Yeah. <laughs> We ran it to, uh, so here's, here's a question for the friend. How long, when you first configured a machine to speak to the internet, did anyone, how long did it take? Oh. I, mean, I remember, I remember well, at least a half day. Probably. How long, how long would it take me to download 36 floppy, uh, uh, three, and a, three and a quarter inch floppy disk images of Slackware? From a PBS. From, from a PBS. Well, from when wow. I, had, I had FTP. Go so Fido! Go Fido! Yeah, I, had, I had FTP access, but I had the other one. I already had. I, I already had the internet access for that. That was at Syracuse. I had OS two. I got the TCP/IP stack. But then I discovered which TCP for OS two. The IBM. All right. That that the IBM guys were selling, except for the folks at the Watson Research Center who put the stack up on their on their VBS. Right. And you could download it if you dialed in, um, which I did. And, and that only was like seven or eight floppies. Um, and the, but but I had this. So I got the TCP/IP stack running on on, uh, on OS two. And this must have been ninety three. Was your connection? No, because I didn't slip. have a connection Did to you the internet. Slip? No, I had no connection to the internet. It was in in the library at Syracuse. Syracuse had. At the time, and they still have one of the largest Novell installations in the world, and routing IPX. In order to get an IP address, you had to write a business case. <laughs> so it took me about six weeks to get an IP address on my desktop. Um, and then once I did that, um, I just I plugged in the IP address, and you know, and then, and then you know, then 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 the Linux fun started. And that was a, that's a, what? what is when I was at Duke, when I got there, which was fall of 89, they had an NBI distributed word processing system, which was a competitor to Wang and some other ones. But it was a network dedicated word processing system. And everybody, it only supported three letter logins, login names, which was fine with me. It was my first name, mistake. That's why I left. <laughs> and it had a modem pool. And we could actually access character based. Lexus over that modem pool as well as we of course had the red ubic in the library area. Check with keys. What's that? Check with keys. Check with keys indeed. And of course, you know, like a what a nine, twelve inch black and white monitor that reminded me of my first TV. Not my first TV, my first college age TV, because our first TV of course was a giant console. If you think about it, if you think about technology and that's all the time, so what, what fascinates me are, are, are two things that are sort of not directly, but we have remember that technology. If you think about the aggregate time that we have all saved in the last, let's say, 15 years, simply downloading stuff like vendor patches and documents. Oh, I mean, yes. Over what it was like before that. I mean, it, it's got to be, I mean, just from the people in this room, it's got to be in the man year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's just insane how much easier that stuff well, has gotten than it was. But, it, but as an example of something good that eventually turns evil, there's the whole Windows update service. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> you know, and so now every day, you know, we, or, or malware, which we now get delivered to us whether we want it or not. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, I mean, as much as, we, as much as we bitch about the administrative overhead that we, we all have, which yes. is it's a constant, I think, no matter what technology. I do remember a time when you would convene a faculty committee to make a decision about purchasing two PCs. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were five thousand dollar PCs. <laughs> we had to route every every purchase of anything computer through the head of um, campus computing. He had, had his signature had to be on the PO to buy you know a modem card, and it would take six months. Uh, Azor, twelve hundred bucks. Yeah. Over as the director of Cornell. 
our administrative officer, Robinson, shows up in my office one day with this stack of paper that is the size of two Manhattan phone books. Puts it down on my desk and he says, I want you to deal with this. And I said, what might this be, Rich, the formula for rocket fuel? <laughs> and he said, no. It's the, it's the windfall computer accounts. Well, turns out that the central campus computer people in their infinite wisdom had been handing out email and mainframe accounts to basically anybody who asked for them, which consisted of two categories of people, a few weirdos like Ted Eisenberg who were actually doing stuff on research grants on mainframes with social science data, and every LLM student who figured out that they could use this to write home. Because the, the, the only email that was around in those days was BitNet, and, they, and they'd all figured out they had some buddy at a university in Italy, and they could, you know, they could, they could do this. So no one had paid the slightest bit of attention to canceling these accounts for something like 13 years. And so I had this, I had this stack of paper like this, and on each side, on one side of each of these pieces of paper was a list of eight sort of people, right? Entries for eight with their account numbers and who they supposedly were and so forth and so on. And the other side was an extensive list of stuff that the responsible administrator needed to, needed to fill out. You know, who you were, what your department was, phone number, blah, 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 why you had authorization to make changes in the accounts, if you wanted to make changes in the stuff, not the other side. And I thought, well, I'm not doing that. So I called user accounting and I said, I have a stack of you cannot believe how many of these things I have to do and I have, I have two questions. What's that? I said, well, first of all, do you have any integration with the registrar's office? Because we can cut this real short if you can just get rid of all the accounts for students who are no longer enrolled. And they said, uh, no, we don't actually have anything that integrates with the registrar's systems. And here's my second question. I assume that you key punch these or otherwise data enter them when they come over because they're in nice little boxy form. Do I have to fill out both signs for every form or can you simply take the information from one and replicate? said, well, no, I'm sorry we can't do that. You're going to have to fill out all of them. I said, well, then in that case, I have a third question. <laughs> do you have computers there? <laughs> Man, that was unbelievable. Another thing that strikes me about technology that, that we don't often talk about the changes made is disintermediation. And, and you know, librarians are somewhat acutely aware of this. but. Think of the other people, think of all the travel agents who weren't needed anymore once we could all go online and book our reservations. Oh, thank God. <laughs> think of the uh, box office anymore. folks. Who, <laughs> we still have them, but, but maybe not as many of them are working because of movie tickets online and, uh, and uh, Ticketmaster and Ticketron and all those folks. Oh, I stopped there about factory workers and robots that are all these right. Got robots at the, at the manufacturing facilities and vacuuming your rug if you so like. I have a question to the Cali, um, to John and everyone else. Because I remember when I went to my first Cali conference and we're looking at the computers that were in all of them. They were connected individually by fiber. Who made that decision? No fiber. No. No, it was fiber to the desks. There's no, we we pull, we we didn't we didn't pull horizontal fiber. We pulled, uh, well, actually, yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we didn't terminate it. <laughs> oh, that's all. I thought there was, I, I thought I distinctly remember seeing labs that were individually fired. Well, let me put it this way. We terminated it at the computer, but not back at the, uh, <laughs> at the closet. <laughs> nice. So he invented dark fiber. <laughs> was 91 and and there was a huge fight because we had pulled a giant ARCnet network in the old building. ARCnet cable uh, oh, coax. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, and the fight was whether we should do Arc, uh, what was it called? Arc, ARCnet Plus, which would go 25 megabits per second, or this newfangled thing called Ethernet on 10 base T. And I and I had to, you know, the, the biggest uh, there was a faculty meeting trying to explain the difference between <laughs> the difference between determined state protocols like token ring and ARPNET, which they all wanted because you could predict how when a packet would arrive, and this sort of hippie thing called Ethernet, which used probabilistic, you know, mechanisms. 
And I was trying to say, you know, yeah, but Ethernet's better, and everybody's going that way, and Pen based is the way. Who says lawyers aren't processed? Oh, oh my yeah. God, it was awful. <laughs> so, it, it, so at the last minute, though, AT&T came out with this thing called Hybrid, which had both uh, Pen based T in it and fiber. And, uh, and neither of which worked especially <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so we pulled, we pulled that everywhere because we thought, because we were also told by the at t engineers, because we talked to them, that you're never going to get faster than 10 megabits per second on copper. Right. Never going to happen. This is the, we're all, you know, we're introducing this and we realize this is the peak of, of this technology. <laughs> it's all going fiber, you know, in a few short years. So we wanted to be ready for that, especially because we wanted to be able to deliver video, you know, uh, right. all over the, uh, all over the building. About that time, there was a Nobel users group that met in Ithaca, uh, but it had significant numbers of people from Corning Classic because they had all these, they had all these lands. And we were talking about fiber installations one night, and everybody sort of started looking at these guys and saying, but you know, of course you guys have fiber in your, your, your shop, right? And they were trying to see, well, no, actually, we haven't installed it. <laughs> well, why not? They said, it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it costs a lot to terminate. How many people here administered a thin net network? Uh, not this one. Not this one. We did last. The joy of a, the dean's secretary moving her desk and unplugging an entire <laughs> <laughs> and then having to troubleshoot that. That was, yeah. that was a joy. Oh, my goodness. So, so much fun. So, so I actually have a question for Tom that needs to be a good story. Um, at Cornell, yeah. when, when you were, I think when you were, you were doing this, um, when did when did they shut down the ARCnet token ring, whatever it was, before he's going in? Two weeks before when he was done using it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, did, when did they make that switch? You know, I don't I don't remember. Is it still running? I don't remember exactly why it's still running. Uh, I remember that we installed the ARCnet network in I want to say roughly eighty seven, early eighty eight. Yeah. Uh, we had the first local area network on campus. Yep. For, mm -hmm. for administrative stuff. Uh, we went with our company for stability reasons. Just then that. I don't think they made the switch to 10 base T until probably 93. I mean, I was I was pretty much out of it at that point. So, so 93, so let's flash forward a couple of years to, uh, let's see, when did I start there in, uh, I started there in 90, I started there in 96, 96. I was there until I get probably, so let's say the fall of 98, this must have been. So say seven years after, five to seven years after they shut down the arc, right? Switched over to 10 base gate. Me and my crew are uh, looking for, we need racks. And I was going to buy some. But my assistant man, Chris, goes, you know, I think there's racks in some of the old arc <coughs> Um, we should just go and, you know, that stuff's not being used. We can get rid of the equipment and we can reuse the racks. I'm like, dude, you're brilliant. So we go down to, uh, uh, we go down to a closet in the, in the, uh, on the first basement level that also doubles as a uh, utility room for the uh, uh, maintenance staff. We open the door and there's the ARCnet cabinet and all of the pretty lights. Still it's been disconnected. Nobody bothered to turn it off. <laughs> Sitting down there. Shut it away for years. It didn't go anywhere. It, was, it had been disconnected. But nobody nobody bothered to nobody had to bother to shut it down. That's why I'm still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tom's brain. Yeah. 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 So we shut it down and got rid of that stuff. You can use it Absolutely. <laughs> we ran and it did there was like a about five administrative offices in the 89 that were connected with the token ring network. And they had, other than the uh, one PC in the library, I think that was the, the um, those that had the only piece in the building. But then in the fall of 89, when we first put on the student network, it was LatticeNet, which was a precursor <laughs> 10 base T network that, but I mean, it was, I'm sorry, unshielded twisted pair, but not yet 10 base T. And when we went to 10 base T, we had to swap out all the cards as well as the switch. The, the switches, or back then, they were hubs, not switches. I have a social question. It, it's something I've always, I, 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 well, I'll just ask you. So, 
Have you made friends as a result of the conference and kept up friendships? Absolutely. You know, has, has it been something that, that works on that level, not just the collegial or technical? Uh, oh, yeah. Could I address that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, some of my best friends in the world are right here and here and elsewhere in the building. It's, uh, Tom Bruce will remember this. I think Phil and, and Tom Ryan will remember this a few years ago. In 96, I'm sorry, 06, I get my decades mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> Three days before the conference, my sister sends me an email. It comes to me in Lauderdale. They live in Miami. says, my mother needs to have her gallbladder. At that point, my mother was uh, 85. And, you know, my wife was already in Florida visiting. Her mother was up in Central Florida. And, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be down there at the end of the week. I'll help you with mom. Well, we get to Wednesday morning. My daughter, who lives in Durham, calls me. She's having a, what sounds like a gallbladder attack at her age, in her mid-twenties. And my wife's still in Florida, so we're trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to handle all this? Well, my wife and I agreed she'd start working away from Florida. My daughter's boyfriend would take care of her, and I'd go down to see my mom. But, you know, what kept me sane, aside from my sister, was knowing that my best friends in the world I was going to see at this conference that week. Did you see them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom, I said. I said I saw you too. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, I learned early on that not to give a, uh, a text presentation with Tom in the audience when he'd been ca caffeinated. <laughs> well, no, Tom was much more uh, deadly to uh, uh, security systems, a la. Extegrity. <laughs> that, that's an apocryphal story if there ever that's, was one. That was, that was I think Greg was basically standing up and saying, uh, nobody's ever cracked the security out <laughs> on my, my system. And like five minutes later, uh, Ryan goes, I did. <laughs> and how did you do it? With like a, a, a virtual machine attack? That was before they even considered that. Yeah. It was funny, it was, it was uh, three different vendors, and they all started off with the, our systems are totally secure, yeah. and so they all had free demo downloads. So we downloaded, well not all of them, one of them didn't. Uh, the other ones that were there had demo downloads, so we were sitting in the back, we downloaded all the demo downloads we could, we broke all of them, we had to do some changes to why to get it to break one of the other ones. But within five minutes we had broken all of their security across all of them. And they're like, oh, there's, there's, John said they're saying that, and then we, like, well, we just broke yours and yours and yours. Yours we couldn't download, we probably would have broke it too, and we did it all in the last five minutes. And they're like, <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> the average student. <laughs> yeah. You know, I almost uh, lost three sponsors. Though <laughs> 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 no, I promise I will never invite Top Ryan to another conference again. <laughs> it's something you did, and in Eugene, he gave what has to stand as the most highly caffeinated. Presentation at Kelly Conference ever. Your first security presentation. No. I thought it was Pearl. No. no. Uh, security. It, was security. Yeah. it was happening so fast. It looked like Pearl. It was in the back of my Red Jacks presentation. Well, that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That, that was a you missed a parenthesis. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here's Haywood with the inimitable Haywood preparation style, which consists of doing all your slides after the beer. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Standing in front of the room getting nitpicked on angle brackets by Wonder Boy over there. <laughs> I think he only stopped after you sat you and John and sat next to him. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> I well, have to ask you to leave all of that. I felt it. It's only good. Yeah, you having having children was a real good thing. <laughs> it calmed them right down. It did. It did. For some. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to try now, Ken. I Wait, it's hot for another minute or two while I get something else to the. Uh, keep right on talking. Wasn't there almost a fist fight among vendors? Sorry? Wasn't there almost a fist fight among exam vendors at one point? Oh, man, they hated each other for a while, yeah. Yeah, I saw. Um, oh, who was that? The other day, I saw Adam Wasserman oh, and Greg Sarab. They used. They were originally partners. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. What became Exams Soft and Soft Test. Talking to each other civilly the other day. It was the first time I see that in twenty years. years. I yeah. think the restraining order expired. <laughs> 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 it was that bad for a long time. Yeah. 
Well, I'm going to now uh, segue into the uh, demonstration of the Cali Wayback Machine. Uh, I'm going to get my slides that are on the right. Why don't we do the Duke or the Cincinnati uh, website Wayback Machine? <laughs> so, uh, Why are we picking on us? Uh, we want to do a set, I want to try to set uh, a little time for it. safety purposes. Well, am I getting any of the sound I hope to get, but I won't worry about that. Oh, it's not you, it's my, it, I don't think it's sound properly the, loaded on my computer. Was it the sound of the TARDIS? No, it was actually oh. the Back to the Future theme. Oh, like, oh. Um, da, da, da. So anyway, this is our virtual DeLorean set for today. And um, we could go to October 25th, 1985, which is the day Marty McFly travels. <laughs> but that, would take, that would take us back to, to amber and green monochrome displays, so I don't want to go back quite that far. We need at least CGA level. Maybe VGA would be better. So we'll instead go to October 25th, 1990. So we will... Um, prepare ourselves to travel back to the lab machine of 1990. Oh my God. Restart is required for that. Yes, indeed. I really meant to save that file, but that's life. Okay, so far. <laughs> <laughs> it is Windows after all. <laughs> do, you, do you guys remember the Windows NT demo at Cali? Yes. Yeah. I was sitting next to a gentleman who said, uh, as the horse was running, uh -huh. there should be a pig. <laughs> <laughs> and it should be flying. <laughs> All right, this is our choice of operating system now, the Kelly Wayback Machine. We're going to give it a launch. You'll see I'm running QEML. Oh Make sure I have the That's some memory. God. And I thought, of, I thought about having a special prompt for you all, but I decided no, I had to be true to, true to the origin, so we just have a standard C prompt. It's a little off the screen, so we can't see it. Uh, the yeah. masking's off, Tom. What's the memory on that? Like? The masking's off, the top the tight end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do? Well, let's, well, never mind the prompt, then we'll just see what we can do with this. But, oh, actually, I didn't mean to do that yet. Sorry. Oh! oh, oh, oh that's <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, God. That's just a preview. That's just a preview. Because yeah. yeah. that wasn't until 92, 93. That was still in 90. This is what I meant to do. This is just like the old. <laughs> Did you have your templates with you? you no, oh, they were all stolen. Oh, let me help you with that. <laughs> bought a whole bunch of Unix boxes. They were planning to run uh, Windows on them, and they got these giant tube screens. Oh. But they could only run Windows. <laughs> Don't remember what your file name is? No problem. There you go. Oh. Now, how many of you how many of you had budgeting responsibilities 20 years ago? You're not pulling up Lotus, are you? Yes. All right. All right. There you go, your favorite oh, <laughs> Backslash. F. Oh, man. That's what made the work, the uh, personal computer possible. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. right. That and VisiCal. Yeah, well, VisiCal first. Uh, I should read the lawsuit about this interface. <laughs> now, I don't have an early word star. Uh, uh, I do have a later word star, which I'll show you. Oh, wow. Word Star! I have right. this. Now, this Word Star 7, which actually uses a menu, the original yeah. Word Star yeah. yes. used dot command. So, the closest right. thing we have to that on my computer is something called Joe. 
which is still around. Yeah. I still use Joe. So you, in Joe, you do control K for your phone. Yeah. So bring up L. In WordStar, you would do control dot and, you know, S, Z, or whatever. Is this WordStar before footnotes? It, yeah, this is yeah. Word Star 7, which is from the uh, early to mid 90s. I, think. I did a 50 page paper. On what? No, Zyrek? <laughs> Oh, yeah. John Hopkins actually gave me a set of floppies with Xyrite, but they were, and, and several other programs of the age, but they were single dual density. Yeah. And my, drive, my USB drive couldn't correctly read them. Xyrite was just evil. I have a faculty member who just stopped using Xyrite last year. <laughs> Oh, insisted. Oh, oh yes. At, at the time, he left that. Did he die? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I've got you all beat. I got so many sillies who work perfect. 4.2. Newton. Oh, did you not? 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 Compared to this, the Mac OS looks so bright. So I'll give it a name. There we go. All right, now. Just a bad Now, did we work hard all day, morning, morning, tonight? Did we, were we always working on our computers? No, we played games. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> oh, now, I don't have the sound driver set up for the story. Missile command. No. no. Let me get the spelling right. Let me get the spelling right. Adventure. Galactica. Oh, jeez. Oh. 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 Are you actually running this? Yes. This is a live demonstration. If you can last more than 20 seconds, I'll give you an iPad. <laughs> University, we have the packet driver. The Clarkson packet <laughs> drivers. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to pull again so we can get an address. Uh, we want to actually get an address. We're going to try. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to see the link. But God. Really oh, there. man. Let's do it again. That, no, that's actually, that was the, uh, that was the NDIS packet driver. Uh, uh, they got it. One hundred megabits. Uh, so picked we'll up the, the one. <laughs> ARDCC, we got to, I'm emailing him right now. If Joe Duplin is there. And no, we want And Dan Lynch. Now we're ready, I think. Dan Lynch. God. Oh, yeah. Man, I'm having like flashbacks. Now, the actual cause of the error was before was because I didn't have NDIS loaded. Do you remember your password, Tom? <laughs> All right, one of my favorite games in the world for Windows. We can play those sometime. Trump. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it, it, unless you want to hand me an IP, I don't know what I would load here. So uh, I'll, I'll check <laughs> that. Sorry, <laughs> 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 after 20 years, my 90 days trial. It's only Nagware. Oh. oh. Now there's an IP that I expect won't work. Maybe it'll break your network, we'll see. <laughs> but we must load the most valuable internet program of 1993. There you go. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. In the flesh, so 
episodes. Disclaimers <laughs> apply. <laughs> <laughs> now this is from approximately that same time period of the page of the Legal Information Institute, which other than the missing image renders quite well. But I won't I won't show you what I went through the other day with this just to see what a modern how a current page renders. Oh, not oh, a pretty no. slide. Any Easter eggs in your tongue? What's that? I thought I'd tell you. Any an Easter eggs? Are there any, Tom? I thought I'd tell you. I can just try to pass the key. I can try to pass the key. There it is. The, wow. uh, the mission statement of LII. And, uh, we have a mission statement? <laughs> Notice there's no address book. Right before we hired you. Right. That's right. 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 Launch a go for a session. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I have a live internet connection because my IP address isn't correct. We'll just try one. Which one shall we do? It's not the one. It's You can go to anywhere.com. Actually, you should get an error that it doesn't have a valid address or it can't do whatever it needs to do. So we'll, we'll just wave goodbye to Trello. There's nothing that hasn't been seen on the live in any year. Now, before Lexis and Westlaw discovered the World Wide Web, they had clients. Oh, you're not actually not running on the web. You made a mistake. Oh, God. This is actually a late night too. I don't know, what was it? WSM? Well, you notice they did have Windows sockets available. But if you didn't have Windows sockets, you still had your modem pool, you could do such things that the Linux would have. Anyway, for those of you who read Nobel Networks, we have Max Nasty as a choice on here to connect, and we have Icon as a choice to connect for those of you. Oh, yeah. So uh, that is our brief but fun trip, I hope, back to the early 1990s. And it's also right on time, the end of our session. I want to thank all of our panelists. I want to thank all Although I don't expect to make it to the end of them, I am looking forward to the next 20 years of Cali meetings. We'll see you back there in 2030. Yeah. <laughs> and for all of you who are flying on airplanes, yes. have a good time with the monkey. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> oh, that's the closing theater. Oh, we have a closing cleanery? We do. Where is it? 207. No, it's 207. 207. 207. 207. Across the street. Who will be watching the play? They're giving away prizes. iPads. Oh, for live view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, two, seven, and we're going to flow here to a four.